Hey everybody, Paint Marine here with a, another Paint Marine's workbench. Now it's been a while since I've done these and um, I did some recent conversions and someone kind of asked if I had done a video for the conversion and I had not, unfortunately, um, which would kind of make sense if I'm trying to, you know, build my content. I should probably make videos every chance I get, but just with life in general, things um, kind of get super busy sometimes. I don't have the time. Well, I have a little bit of time now. Uh, so I'm going to make the best of it and go ahead and make a video. Now I wanted to make a video particularly about this conversion I'm about to do because it is to do with this model here, Adrax Argotone or a Agritone. Um, and the reason being is because he is such an elaborate model, there's going to be a decent amount of um, conversion stuff going on here. Um, and right now, I, I'm kind of thinking that um, I'm going to keep the Drake skin cloak because, uh, I don't know, it just, there's this part here that just kind of looking at it, it seems like it'll be a potentially kind of a pain to, to take care of, but we'll see once we get more into it. I may change my mind um, once we get into it. Um, so the first thing I like to do, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll go into the kind of tips of, of the steps I go through when I am about to um, convert or prepare to convert something um, is I just will try to get a look at the model itself um, as far as like the sprues. Now um, GW does pretty good with uh, posting the sprues on their product page so you can get at least one side. I would kind of wish they would show both sides sometimes of the same sprue so you can see uh, kind of like both, side, uh, both sides of the piece or the bits that you're trying to look at. Um, but the fact that they at least give a picture of one side is pretty decent. So um, kind of gives me an idea. I can go from there looking at here, like this picture here, what the model looks like assembled. Um, but then being able to see those sprues, I can kind of maybe go a little bit further into the planning process onto how difficult of a conversion this might be and what exactly the components and pieces are and if it's something um, that I even want to use as my base model for a conversion. Um, now, I personally am trying to convert all of the new characters that have been coming out for the different Space Marine chapters into kind of a more generic type of character for my homebrew chapter. Um, reason for that is I, the models are just cool in general, um, but I also, and so I would like to include them in my army, but then I also have this kind of idea where I want to use each one of these models after I convert them in my army to represent like a different company captain so that each company within the chapter has like its unique um, captain with it. So um, here I, I definitely like uh, that it comes with a thunder hammer and this hand flamer. Um, but the thunder hammer, I'm, I'm still toying with if I want to replace the thunder hammer head on it. Uh, while I do like the thunder hammer head, it does have um, some unique parts on it. Um, I'm going to kind of flip it over here so you can kind of get a little bit better view here. Um, like I said, these images are all available on the Games Workshop website. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, um, if I can move it in a little bit closer, um, there's like some uh, kind of flame details here um, that might be hard to take off. It's kind of hard to tell right now. Um, another kind of disappointing thing as of right now is this little Drake shield thing. Um, easy enough to take off. I just don't have a generic shield that um, goes on the uh, the right shoulder or right, I guess, pectoral area um, that matches that. I have a bunch of ones that go on the left side, um, but not any that go on that side. So again, I'll have to look and see. Maybe I can just do away with it and it won't be that big of a deal. Um, and then some other parts you can kind of see, um, like over here on his... Um, like shins and stuff, he's got the flame detail. So trying to take that off is going to be a pain. But I'm going to try to do it uh, and kind of show you um, some tips and techniques on how I do that. Uh, I hope it turns out. This is going to be a trickier one because it's not as easy, I'll say, as just removing like a chapter icon from a shoulder pad to make it a blank one. That's a bit easier. I'm going to use a similar technique though with this um, to try to do it. However, I am going to um, attempt to kind of keep how it's kind of got like this framing around it. I'm going to try to keep that, but remove the flame part of it. 
Um, so yeah, we'll see how that works. He also has a similar design on his uh, forearm as well. So, um, and then the next thing too I was looking at is his head as well. Um, I would like to swap that out, but he, it's got an interesting thing and as I'll point out here soon, um, there's actually a hole in the front here where like a tube goes through and then we put the head on like the tubing is supposed to connect to this breather mask thing. Um, so it's going to be kind of difficult to find a head that particularly work well or look well in there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how we'll do that. Um, but yeah, like, let me pull out the sprue here so you can get a, bit, a little bit better idea of what we're dealing with. So, um, yeah, so here's the sprue. You got one side here, and then there's the other side. So, um, like I said, I don't know if I can get this to show up well at all. Like on the hammer here, you can kind of maybe see some of the flame detail. Um, but the other kind of interesting part here is going to be uh, this big belly piece right here, how it's incorporated pretty much right into this upper torso. Um, and it's not going to be so easy just to remove because of the way it is in the back here. Um, it's very much like half of it kind of goes up into this main torso. So trying to remove it, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, but I'm going to do my best. Um, it was a little nicer, a little bit easier with the, uh, the White Scars character because um, that kind of belly armor piece that he had uh, was like its own piece. Um, so I just had to not put it on. And then there was a little, there was a, a actually a decent sized hole that kind of go, went all the way through. And I just had to get a belt buckle and a bit of a belt um, to replace that area. So, um, and then again, looking. So it actually is looking like... Yeah, so I'm looking here at this shoulder piece with that kind of shield, and um, I would need to put something there because I, it's easy enough to take off, um, but there appears to be kind of more of the chest piece and like a tube of some kind that kind of goes behind there. Um, so it would look kind of odd to then just have that gone. Um, of course, I'll probably try to remove, well, I will remove it, and then um, after it's removed, I will look and see uh, what it looks like, and perhaps it will actually work that way um some other things i do like though um this part here i could actually i could potentially maybe take the drake scale off um you know i salamanders was a big army of mine it was when i first like i mean i'm in a real true love army um so it, it hurts me to even think to not put his drake scale on but i mean he's gonna be with my new love my new star commanders um, and uh, they don't really sport the Drake's skull. They don't really sport furs either, but I kept the furs with the white scar. Um, I mean, it's kind of situational, I guess, because um, that character's going to have its own background that explains that, and I could do the same here, like he's some kind of a monster hunter of some kind and wore this as a trophy. Um, but um, I do have, I did find a, a cloak that may work. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, because right now, as far as like Primaris cloaks go, I think the only one we really have that is the one that comes with the, uh, Primaris Captain, um, like cape or cloak or whatever you call it, and it flows the opposite direction of this, and the rest of the model is very, can pretty much position the other way to have kind of the wind blowing the way like this is going. Um, but I did find a cloak that it's, uh, from the Primaris Gravis Captain, I actually have, uh, an extra one of those because I got two sets of the Dark Imperium. Um, where I, well, I had traded uh, the Plague Marine side for the another side of the Imperium. So I do have uh, a bit of potential there. We'll have to see. Um, but I do like how now, I mean, there's a bit of a backpack here, but or back part here, but that can be um, fairly easily replaced um, if I decide to go a different route with this cloak. Um, and then... Um, yeah, you can see here, like, we got a shin that's actually connected there, which it won't be once I remove this. So what I'll probably do is I'm probably going to start with removing um, the, this um, front talbert 
piece here, and then I'll only have that part left, and then I'll try to remove that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to cut all the bits out real quick, and I kind of clean them up. Hey all, I'm back. So here I have gotten uh, all of the, well, most of the pieces off the sprue. Uh, I actually left the head on the sprue, and uh, I cut this off already, the flame at the top. I'm um, just saving it to use on some other project at some point. Um, yeah, not sure what yet, but uh, it's a pretty cool piece, so definitely going to be holding on to it. Um, and like I said, I'm keeping the head on there for now. I may use it. I'm not exactly sure right now, um, but just going to leave it off to the side for now. Um, and then there's a few other pieces on the table here. Um, maybe, I don't know if this will add better light. Make it a little bit easier to see. Let's see. Um, so, uh, I've got these two, um, shin, um, uh, pieces, and then this here. Um, this is the gunner torso from a repulsor kit that, um, I didn't use the gunner on. And then this is just some shin from, uh, an extra intercessor that I haven't used. Um, so basically what this means here is I'm going to do a little bit of a cop out, uh, to make it a little bit easier and just not have to remove um, <laughs> these little flame things. It's just looking at them, it's going to be really difficult uh, to do that. Um, and then the other thing, um, I'm still not sure how I'm going to do this, but I, I think this this can be done probably and be able to and look okay. Um, but I, I kind of messed around with this cape a bit. Um, and with, a, with another uh, cape piece that I had, and I just couldn't find anything that's going to quite fit right. And then with this arm, the way it, it works, um, it fits in there, you know, kind of you know, very interestingly um, to where I could take this off and then put just like a regular, I could have another, um, I could cut this down and put like a different... Uh, shoulder piece on here um, but yeah like I said unfortunately like, the cape didn't quite look right so I don't know I'm kind of still toying with what I want to do here because like I said um, ideally I want to get away from the Drake cloak um, as cool as it looks um, to try to make it look a little bit more my chapter um, but it is such a huge piece it's like it's literally the backbone of this model so um, I think for now I'm going to keep it and I'm going to hope that with these other changes that I'm going to do uh, that will be enough of a change to make it more uh, like my chapter um, so yeah so with that um, I'm going to use this torso piece here um, basically to replace the abdomen part um, that you know, I'll be taking off of this. Um, so I'm going to be doing that in hopes that that turns out. Um, I'm probably still going to try to save uh, this tabard piece to go in the front because um, the bottom of this is kind of actually missing kind of this little portion of the groin. So if I was to line it up here, um, it would line up right about there. And you can see. Um, yeah, there's like, there'd be a, a, a gap there. So, um, I'm going to try to cover that with this, this Talbert piece here. Um, yeah. And then with, uh, these shin pieces here, um, you can see it kind of has like this piece that goes over the top of the foot, um, which the ones that come in the kit, you can get this held up, right? Uh, they do not have that because it's already on the foot. So I'm going to have to cut those off, but you can kind of already see um, these both are the perfect angle and everything to fit right on there. Um, so I just got to remove those little over the top um, pieces and it'll be good to go. So that's a, that's a pretty awesome that I had those um, to kind of cheat and get away with that. 
Um, so we're going to start diving into this. So you may notice I have a bandit on it, and that's not because I cut myself or anything. It's actually to prevent cuts because a lot of times when you're working with these hobby knives and um, when I do conversions anyway with how I cut um, to a little bit more precision, um, I kind of have to cut towards me and like and doing this way here with my hand like this I get a lot more power behind it and I can go a lot slower with more control um, to get like those more precise like, shaving done um, and so a lot of times they always tell you don't cut towards yourself well that's still a good rule um, but when you're trying to go away from yourself you tend to have like less control because you're kind of like out here all over the place so you'll have kind of less control and less power but if I'm like this, I'm more stable. I, I can bring everything in toward me and stay stable. So what sometimes I'll do, and I'll, I mean, I'm not going to do this particular for this piece. Um, and I've only got this on here as a precautionary because I don't know if I'll actually need it for anything. But generally when I'm shaving something, um, it's kind of almost like, I don't know if you ever peel the carrots or potatoes. Like, you know, you can cut that way, but it's usually easier to go that way. But anyway, um, I'll take a piece and I can shave. And then if I... You know, if it's hard pieces, sometimes it comes through and then all of a sudden it gives. And then what tends to happen is then you'll come through and you'll slice your thumb up. Um, so this is, it's kind of almost like a thimble, really. Um, but it's just a band-aid. <laughs> and it, it's always worked well in the past to stop um, to where I actually don't go into my thumb and, and cut myself. So, um, all right. Well, so let's start. I think we'll start here with these... Um, uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, these little shin things. So this would be kind of a good thing here to show, like, because um, I want to get nice precision cuts. So I'm going to go in, but I'm not going to, like, go super far with it right now. Um, let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. So hopefully this is just temporary setup. Hopefully I can get a better setup once I get it. Moved into my new home, so please bear with me. All right, so I'm just gonna take it in a little bit. I'm not going too far. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll take it in and just, instead of trying to cut it, I'll, I'll just kind of rock it back and forth and try to follow um, the pathway here. Now I can see um, it's getting harder to kind of turn so I'm going to stop going that way I'm going to come in from the other side and kind of follow along the same way all right all right so now this is where it gets kind of beneficial to then we can get in here start to take out some of what you just worked on to get it out of the way. So, boom, take this little piece out. I'm just throw it over here for now. Um, let's see here. Almost get that one out. Come in from this side and try to cut. Alright, okay. that piece comes out. Alright, so now, um, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to eat this. You can see I have just like this little tiny, this will focus, little tiny kind of tongue piece kind of sticking out here. So we're almost done. Um, and now that all that else is kind of out of there, I can kind of use a little bit more to kind of get in there and, and shape it and clean it out a little better. Um, loose tooth once you get it kind of wiggled out of there you can clear it out okay all right now I'm just going to kind of clean it up in here as best I can and what I'll try to do is I'll try to kind of just drag the blade across kind of like when you're taking mold lines off um, I'll try to kind of smooth everything out now it's not exactly perfect here it's not got that really nice curve that I would for, um, but 
it's kind of hard when you're, I mean, you're cutting with a straight blade into a curved thing here at this level, but um, now that they've done, I'm gonna take a look here and see how how it looks on there and how it's fitting. Okay, so there it is. Um, and actually, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty good. It actually seems to be sitting up a bit more and um, from looking at it here, this is where I'm going to use the other one as kind of a reference here. Okay, it actually, hmm. the the actual one even kind of has a, a pretty big gap on there too. I'm going to look at the box art now. Let's see. And you don't really see that on the box art, but I'll add this on here too and see. You still get that gap. Yeah, there seems to be an interesting little gap here. Hmm. It's interesting. So the gap I have though is a little bit different. But yeah, it's definitely sitting up a little bit higher, so I'm probably where am I hitting it? Okay. So there is some stuff here. I am just wish this camera would stay focused. It's constantly going in and out. Um, there's a little bit of stuff on the inside here that's actually kind of hitting and preventing it from sitting flush. So I'm going to work at getting that out of there and see if that helps the situation. Should. Um, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to take a little bit off of the other model. Um, but I prefer not to do that. I find when doing uh, conversions and things, uh, whatever your base model is, is actually the thing, um, at least when I do them, that I try to do the least amount of converting to. Um, when adding pieces, I try to do the conversions to the pieces that I'm adding to the model first. Because <laughs> usually that means it's because they're extra pieces, extra bits and such. Um, so it's kind of like if I mess up, I, I should have more or it was, you know, I can always jump on and get more. Um, but when you're converting a, a model, especially uh, an expensive model or a model that um, you usually can't buy pieces of because it's a character like these, you're, you're not going to probably find these um, bit websites where you'll find just this flamer. I mean, they have the ones from the new Soundman or Sprue now. But you probably won't find like this bit and this hammer. You, it, it, you might, but it's going to be kind of few and far between. So, all right, let's see how that sits now. Okay, that's sitting way better. Way, way, way better. That's pretty awesome now. Yeah, that's a perfect. Sweet. All right, so I'm going to clean it up just a little bit more here. Just got some more. Flashes here on the side from when they came off the sprue. Okay. And on this side. Alright, so that one is done. And uh, like I said here, um, it's it's a good fit. It's a really good fit. If you can get if you're down there. Um, yeah. I don't know if I can get that on there a little better. But yeah. It's like I said, it's a, it's a nice fit. Everything looks really well, actually. Um, hopefully the camera is kind of picking that up. All right, so now i get some of these flakes out of the way. We're going to work on the next one. And how does this guy sit on here like that? So another thing, too, is that whenever you're getting ready to plan your stuff and, and things like that, I always try to... It's, it's, I guess that's a way, it's a sort of kind of dry fit, uh, if you want to call I guess you could call it the, the dry fitting of the pieces, um, where I'll take, you know, capes or whatever and kind of like try to marry it up. Like, I, you know, I was kind of looking at this here, trying to see, like, you know, what this kind of looks like. And, um, you know, like, it actually looks, looks pretty cool. Um, but, you know, then... It's just, you know, a way to 
help you visualize what your uh, end product is going to end up looking like. So um, something to do as well with your, your pieces. So yeah, just clean up the sides here a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go in the same way as before. One thing I've noticed, and I don't know if it's just because these are newer models and if there's something with the properties of the plastic um, over time, but these new models coming from GW, the plastic seems a lot softer, which I'm okay with um, because it's, like I said, with cutting and doing things, it's been a lot easier uh, to work with. Um, there's a little bit of give, and like I said, I, I feel like uh, it's a little bit more, it seems a little more control when I'm cutting and doing uh, conversions and such. Uh, with the past, with the models, I found uh, the plastic, I guess, I don't know if just over time, just gets a little bit harder or whatever, or kind of more brittle almost, where it'll seem really hard and tough, even when I'm just cutting with, like, uh, the, I don't know what these are called, the little bits, things, the bit cutter things. Anyway, when you're like cutting, like it, sometimes it can just seem like it snaps um, more than it cuts off or whatever. So, yeah. Okay, now it just came off pretty easily, but there's a lot more in here to kind of clean up. So I'm gonna kind of work on that. So yeah, while I'm doing this kind of mundane part, let's talk a little bit more here. Um, I've thought about maybe trying to do these in more of like a live stream thing. I definitely uh, feel like once I get more subscribers and stuff like that, that's something I'm going to look into doing. Uh, right now, I don't have a huge subscriber base, but if it is something that anybody's interested in, even if it's just like a few people show up, you know, I can do it as I can kind of do like a conversion Saturday or Sunday or something like that. Um, jump on and, you know, just chat and talk while I'm working on a conversion or something. Uh, I think that would be kind of fun to do. Um, so definitely if you think that's something you'd like to see or do or participate with, um, let me know and I'll definitely look more into it and, um, yeah, kind of go from there. Um, and uh, if you have any suggestions for any other ideas or things you'd like to see or, you know, things you either haven't seen and would like to see or you've seen elsewhere and, you know, like to see my version of it, definitely let me know. Um, greatly appreciate all the good um, suggestions, ideas, constructive criticisms, all that, you know, I'm definitely, all this is a work in progress um, for sure. Um, unfortunately, I wish I could just be more consistent with the timing of my videos and when I can do it, but uh, my day job is, unfortunately, it's the most <laughs> consistently inconsistent thing. <laughs> you know, I can, if there's one thing I can count on, it's that job being inconsistent. It is ever flexible, I guess, but steady at the same time. <laughs> so... Um, oh, I kind of fell off. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we're kind of almost done here, and I'm going to kind of take a look here and see if I need to clean anything else up. Um, this one, I don't know the angle of it or what, but it just seemed to go a lot smoother. Okay, it's kind of, it's kind of sitting a little bit weird. But actually, eh, yeah, it's actually pretty good, actually. Yeah, I'm going to call that actually really good. There's not really any big gaps. I don't really care. Yeah. There's a little piece or a little part inside that. Oops. Actually, I almost went underneath my little TV stand. Um, I'm going to kind of kind of clean up this angle here to see if I can get it to sit down a little bit further actually. Everything else fit pretty well. 
said, I really like the angle of this. I can actually get a good cut with the curve here and there. I don't know what's up with that. It's just the the degree of the curve here is a little bit uh, a little bit better. Um, another thing, like I said, like I'm not the most uh, tech savvy person, um, so I mean I'm, I'm hopefully, like I said, with everything, things cost money, nicer cameras, video recording things and such. Um, so hopefully, I can continue to improve hardware wise. But um, oops. Um, but if anyone has any suggestions on, like, you know, is there a setting on this? I have it. It's a, what is it? It's a Logtech webcam I'm using right now. Uh, I can't tell you much more. I, I'm not sure which one it is. It's supposed to be a high def one, but I don't feel like it's very high def. Um, and maybe that's because of some settings or something else I got going. So if anybody's computer savvy like that or has any suggestions on how I can make it a little, a little better video quality or, or what I can do. Let's let me know for sure. All right, so the next thing I'm noticing is there's this little divot thing here that's kind of getting in the way. Because it was sitting pretty good, and then now all of a sudden it's like not wanting to sit well. So I'm going to cut that divot thing out. And see how that worked. And that. Good, pretty good indeed. Oh, yeah, liking it a lot. Looks good, looking good. All right, well, those are done. Um, actually, you know, and I might as well go ahead and I'm gonna glue them now so I can get them set. Um, so what I'm working on this next area. I'm going to be some careful here. I'm going to put a little bit on the actual part. But then um, I feel like the glue is probably more important on this part here. Since this is kind of the, kind of the flooring piece that's being added to it. It might not necessarily hit the, the same contact points as the original. Ah, oh, man. I am <laughs> fumbling it all over. I got a little bit of glue on my fingers, so I gotta be careful not to touch it on my thumb there anyway. Okay, so that's on there. So I don't know, it might be an unpopular opinion that I decided to take this uh, kind of cheat route with these shins, but um, I think it'll overall it'll look good, it'll kind of match the scheme of my um, Star Commander a little better to be a little bit more generic, as weird as that sounds. They Pride themselves on their genericness. You know what? Before I get too crazy with the glue, there's this other little notch. I'm just gonna cut off just to help it a little bit. Um, but I, I still think it'll maintain some of the character of the model pretty well. The posing, the, the weapons choice, um, it's still going to have, like I said, I'm still gonna I'm gonna keep the Drake cloak at this point and come up with some kind of beast or something that he fought. Um you know and then go from there. So Alright, well there is that. So I think it looks pretty well um so far for the replacement shins. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good so far. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to work on, where's my cap for the glue, is I'm going to work on this torso piece. I'm going to remove, first I'm going to uh, work pretty slowly here and try to remove the, the tabard. It should be fairly easy. Um, and then I'm going to try to, because I'm going to salvage it to use it on the model here in a second. Um, and then I'm going to have to remove the shin piece as well. Um, and then after that, I'm going to also very carefully try to remove this torso piece here. Um, 
I don't, it doesn't look like it'll be too difficult to remove the torso from this piece, uh, just because there's not like a lot of extra plastic in here behind it, unlike this, the, the part that I'm trying to cut, like right here, actually like lines up, like the top portion goes up into some, all kinds of stuff going on here, it's kind of not a lot of real estate back there. So that's going to be a little difficult, but we will make it happen, and it's going to come out great, and it's going to be awesome. Shit is a little... Get some of these little flakes out of here. Real quick, because otherwise it's going to bother me while it's sitting there staring me with these flakes on it. It's my OCD kicking in. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh yeah, and then the other thing, this piece here, I'm going to have to remove this shield, um, but uh, it's the way it's done. It's pretty thick. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best and see what it looks like if I can somehow salvage it without having to put something there. But it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for sure. So, all right. So first thing first, we're gonna kind of go that same route that I did before. So this is going to be a part where I need this a little bit extra stability here and then a little extra control and power because it's going to be kind of a thick area. Um, so I got my thumb here so it'll be my blade stopper should I, should I require it. But I'm going to go in. I'm just going to go in as, as far as it'll let me go as easily as it will. And then once I start hitting a little bit more resistance, that's where I'll start to kind of use that slight rocking motion to just work it in there. And you can use kind of bigger ones to get a little bit of a, I guess more cut into it. All right, and when, you, when you start to get to the, the apex of the curve, that's usually a good point to where you want to like try to stop because the blade is going to start coming around as you can see here. Um, well, maybe we can. It's starting to kind of bend, uh, bend that chain straight, and I don't want that to bend too much and potentially break off. And then, um, yeah, and then that curve is going to make it too hard, and I'm trying to salvage all these pieces. So I'm going to come out, and we're going to come in from the other side, doing the same, same thing. Initially, the first chain, because there's not a whole lot of plastic there, it's pretty easy to get through. And a little bit more pressure, kind of rocking back and forth. Trying to get in there pretty close. Now I do try my best to salvage all the pieces that I can. Man, they're still... So on the back here, you can kind of, I don't know, maybe you can see, um, I still got a lot to go. I actually am only about right here and right here, and I need it closer if I want these pieces to kind of come apart. But I'm going to try, yep, okay, it's coming. I'm just going to pull, I'm put kind of like bending it in half here, um, and it's, it's with kind of those cuts on the sides, it's kind of creating a seam right there, and there's already kind of a seam. Um, so it's kind of coming, in, it's coming, it did pull a decent amount of plastic out right there, actually, which is not the best, but um, yeah, it's pretty salvaged, though. So still very usable. Can I clean this up? I'm gonna have to shave it down a little bit, but yeah, that's still, um, I'm gonna call that a win for sure. Um, and I can kind of, you know, take it over here and just, like again, kind of very roughly just see what it might look like over here. And, yeah, that'll still sit pretty well. So yeah, that's kind of good. Alright, so we're going to save this and let's, you know, let's continue. I'll just go ahead and, and try and take this shin off. I'm actually... Like I said, I, I like to try my best to salvage as much as I can here, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this purity seal off. 
um, and put it on the new one in the same spot. Uh, but uh, the rest, ooh, see that went, that cut pretty, pretty all of a sudden like really quick. And luckily my finger wasn't too close. I should probably put a bandaid on this other one too, just a little bit extra protection. I usually do actually have a bandaid on both. Um, my index and my thumb on my left hand. And I'm going to shave this a little bit. Can we get it ready to transplant onto uh, another one? Alright. Let's make sure the glass is on. This right here, so this is that kind of more precision that I'm talking about that as I'm going, it's sliding off and hitting into my thumb, but I'm not getting all cut up, thankfully. So my safety band-aid. Okay. So that's going to go on to this shin over here. I'm actually going to kind of bend it a little bit so it's a little more... I'm just going to put it there for now. Alright, and like I said, so I, again, I try to save as much as I can, but unfortunately, um, the way that this is, I'm not going to be able to really salvage this shin guard. Um, it's just too much a part of it, and like, you can't even see the other side. Um, somebody who's probably better at sculpting and stuff could probably cut this out nicely and then reshape and, you know, re-sculpt that and use it. Um, so I'm going to do the thing I hate to do the most, <laughs> unfortunately, but I am going to uh, remove it. This is the easiest way, though, um, is to kind of just cut it off and around, and then from there, um, just cleaning up the piece that you're actually trying to, to salvage to use. Um, yeah, so pretty much two clips, it's off. Um, and then I'm going to, um, there's still a pretty big chunk on the back here that I want to take off. So take that off. And then I'm going to, going to do that. So that's a prime example there where I was pushing and it suddenly gave way and right into my, my band-aid again. These are just really kind of cleaning it up. Alright. a little bit of a kind of a chunk. Almost kind of taken out of there. Maybe there's just a little rip that happened in the fabric. Okay. Yep, that sits perfect. Right, so put those aside now. Alright, now this part. <laughs> I 100% uh, would love to save this belt buckle piece. Um, but I just don't know how plausible that's going to be without potentially just like destroying the whole rest of the torso as I'm trying to save this like one one piece so hmm. this is decision points here I, I don't I'm just not seeing a good a good way here but I'm going to try I may regret this here in a minute. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see as long as I have enough glue points up top, it's not going to have. So, yeah, I'm going to lose that point of contact there, though. Um, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Oh, shoot. There's its hollow behind there. Hmm. 
This is where I could also cheat and use a Dremel, but you gotta be careful because Dremels heat up pretty quickly and melt plastic. But the problem I run into is there's this piece here in the, in the center that I could cut out and then semi-easily remove remove the torso piece here but then it's kind of a crucial piece not necessarily for the backing but for when you go to put this part onto I keep thinking the legs are glued on there uh, onto the legs here um, I, mean, I'm, you know, I think I'm going to have to just suck it up and take it off and then we'll go from there um, yeah we're going to go with that route I think alright so first things first over here okay let's see what that did kind of caused a bit of stress over there Here now. Okay. Now we're going to try to loose tooth this out. Maybe. I'm trying to get in there and pull this piece out. Keep continuing to take this inside. I'm going to shave it out a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I take. I don't want to get too crazy with it, but um, yeah. But I do kind of need to get crazy with it, so it's easier. But. So I need to come at this side. So we're actually going to do something different. I'm going to try to go in and step in this way. Now this is something you have to be very careful with. Because you can break blade doing that. I'm gonna keep stabbing and kind of doing this. This is like a lot of plastic I'm trying to get through right now. Do my best not to stress the plastic too much because I don't want to break or Got through one side. <laughs> now I'm gonna try to do this on the other side. Okay, where are we at here? This might be a little bit easier on this other side, hopefully. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It just actually started to separate. Out here. Okay, while well, that came out, I pulled a little bit of extra plastic with it. I didn't necessarily want to, um, but uh, I did salvage this piece, which is kind of a cool piece that could be used on a salamander esque type project. So, um, let's see if I can show you what I was able to say. Yeah, so I got the, you know, the Salamander's WWE belt. <laughs> okay, so now cleaning this up. Wow. Yeah, that chunk kind of, it's not the best right there. Got to kind of take it out.
Alright, so now the next part. It's gonna be this torso piece here now. I don't really need to worry about saving. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut some stuff over here. I do try to cheat as much as I can stop these clippers. They're definitely a lot easier of a way um, to get to stuff. tricky because we have the top of the legs but I want to keep do you want to keep part of this I'm gonna first I'm gonna try to cut these down so what I'm gonna actually so um, I want to keep just like the under body glove part of this armor um, but because I don't want to get, I want to be more precise in a minute, but I'm going to, so I cut close, but I give a little bit of room so I don't um, potentially cut off too much, essentially. Um, so I'll get in there pretty close, and then like later I'll come in, you know, and like shave stuff down or whatever. Um, but we're not quite to that part yet. I'm going to lift there, I'm going to take off. Um, so now I'm going to come back here and kind of see how that works. It actually worked really well. Because we're going to have that, and then I'm going to have this piece is going to come up later. And we'll kind of probably put it, yeah, and I'll probably put it right over that area potentially. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that works. Um, because first. We need to now get the torso part attached. And get the torso part attached up underneath of here. Now, just again, kind of dry fitting the pieces. So yeah, that looks good. Or it will look good. Um, so you see, like I didn't cut super, super close, but now I'm going to get a little bit closer. Taking off a few more chunks here and there before I try to get you know, way more precise. Sometimes you can do a lot of work with these clippers faster than the knife, and it's a little bit safer because you're not worrying about potentially, at least in my case, potentially stabbing myself like I've done many times. Okay. But next, I'll probably need the knife to clean it up and shape it more into there. Okay. Yeah. So now. significant peak on it here. It needs to be a little bit more of a just gradual rounded edge here. To fit, I'm going to have to probably shave some of that other part of it down. I realize 
<laughs> my legs down because I, I do need them to be pretty stable right now. Really, really tricky. I'm just trying to get these pieces that were not at all together at one point together. But also, what makes converting a lot of fun. Alright, so I got a weird kind of overhanging piece here. It's pretty well there now. And actually, I'm going to cut. The thing about dry fit is you can see where there's like maybe edges or areas that are kind of creating a lot of resistance or it's not sitting quite as flush because these pieces were not designed to go together. Um, and you can find where you can kind of shave things down a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually pretty good with that. This one here is still... Oh yeah, that definitely helped. 
a time. Good. It looks like there's a gap there. That, I mean, it's just a shadow. I don't know if I can get a better angle here, but yeah, torso is looking pretty good. All right, now, kind of a trickier part. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the back on here first. I have something that's actually part of the model, all the pieces that are supposed to go together. So we'll do this part first. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot of yeah, really glue, but it's kind of a. Unfortunately, huh. kind of missing a lot of the normal points of contact for this one. <laughs> All looks pretty good actually. I don't want to go too crazy right now. I want to let the glue start to set on all these pieces and then we'll get these all mirrored up pretty good. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put this back around. Let's see the original location of the box here. Okay, that's a little bit high on the machine. this purity seal. My purity seal has been replaced. Alright, so what can we work on now? We got most of that all done. Can we clean out here a little bit? Um, so the next thing I want to do is, I don't like that, I'm going to keep it there, we'll save that piece. I don't know if I've already done that one yet, kind of do, um, not going to have to do anything here, this is going to stay the same, um, but actually now that I think about it, I do have to take the flames off, attempt to take the flames off of the Oh, this will focus again. Come on, focus. Focus. <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, so I gotta try to take the flame icons off of here. Um, so I'm just gonna carefully attempt to do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of uh, essentially kind of peeling, following the contours of the armor, peeling it all the way down to where, it, oops, and then it's like, that's not great. I'm trying to stop right before I get to the end. So that way you can try to cut them off and then maintain the um, kind of greaves we're going to call these things of the armor here. Kind of make it look like it never had flames. 
is a schist of border around this portion. Um, but, in doing that, I actually kind of messed up a little bit in this other one, because, um, it, Selling that little rivet thing on the armor. Um, <laughs> kind of slipped and took off one of the rivets on there. But it's actually working out pretty well. So, on the other side, I'm probably going to have to <laughs> remove the middle rivet, just so I can maintain similarity here. Okay. That looks pretty decent. And then this side, and then I'm definitely gonna replace the head of the hammer here. Um, and I can even take this piece out and then replace the uh, the actual hammer portion on each side. I might do that. I don't know. I do like the way the hammer looks. It's just the flames here to remove them are gonna be pretty hard to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm try to make the marks here. So there's a lot easier for some reason, probably because I already had done one and so we were kind of learn um, slip up on the other one. Good. Now I'm gonna dig into my bits, which thunder hammer bits. I don't even have around it right now. So we'll come back to that. One. All right. Now let's see if this is set somewhat. 
is decent. And let's see where we're sitting back here, do I think. Yeah. Need to cut it a little bit more off on these. Accommodate the new torso. Well, that makes sense. I am missing that big chunk right there. I gotta cut that part out. So, let me see. Here is that part. I wonder if I can somehow <laughs> kind of salvage it away. Or I can use it to help support the back and fill in this gap that I've caused. I can get some green stuff as well to kind of fill it in later as well, but in the meantime, we're going to do this. This is definitely, so far, the characters. The other ones have been pretty easy, just like the uh, Iron Hands one was just a head swab, pretty easy. Uh, it's, it's kind of similar with the Raven Guard, I just did head swap and... Um, Put his, and he cut that down a lot actually. Um, his claws out, so it actually looked like he was ripping onto the thing that he was, I don't know, jumping onto. Um, and then the other um, Tigerius, or the, yeah, the Tigerius mod, just um, removed, again, like another head swap, removed ultramarine icons. Pretty simple. Okay, yeah. I'm probably gonna call that good there. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be really good. Look at that. Okay. So let's do this part first before I glue it onto the torso. There we go. I'm going to try to remove this shield piece real quick. It looks really. Uh, I actually didn't look up to see if I could see it on the camera but it looked really good so far on that dry fit there all right this should be another tricky one the one i'm trying to save this one might go flying off when i get it cut off oh, no. Cool. 
Well, there's a couple saved when I do the thing. Couple saved salamander trinkets if somebody might want sometime. Yeah, it's kind of rough looking right here. I'm gonna kind of shave it down a little bit, but it's. I have to put something there. I mean, I could put. I could honestly. I could probably put a, a purity seal or something and get away with it. Or something. I'll have to see what. But I can put it over good. Be careful, there's like this little tube here. Um, I don't want to accidentally like break off or something when trying to shave this down. This is not, it's not easy trying to be super careful not to cut the other tubes and things on it. Let's try to get kind of get an even look here. Go ahead and glue this part on. I still have not figured out what I want to do for the head on this guy yet. Go in there. A little bit of glue up here where the cloak is going to be. Just like it in. I'll do that in a second. Alright, so. Tube goes in. Slides right. bad. Let's see if we can. That's the look so far. I am, I'm really loving the way this is starting to turn out. It's one of the best things about doing conversions is seeing uh, the plan. And even being flexible with the plan, because I you know I've had to be flexible already quite a bit with this one. Um, but yeah, being flexible with the plan and then start to see um, just see it, everything start to come together pretty nicely. Dope, if I do say so myself. And now I'll see this other tube on and see what it looks like. Once it's in place.
looks as if I was a little too much. And that. The nice thing about these little side things right now, they seem to be doing a decent job of hiding some of the gaps that are going on too. Which is part of what I wanted to get them on and see if I had to do a lot of gap filling here or if it's going to be minimal or not at all possibly. So far, it's looking really good. So here's turn there. That's what we got going on right now. Looks pretty dope, if I do say so. And this will go here. Yeah, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna let these actually settle. This new tube thing I just got on. Um, because then we're going to put that on. Um, in the meantime, though, actually, let's do the flamer arm. Get that set in. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to put that on first before you put the torso piece on, because that's kind of like a clip, it looks like, to go um, for it to clip into. Like this, this front piece from the chest piece is supposed to like click into yeah the front of the arm, but um, yeah I can't really do it that way with the way I'm trying to get everything assembled here. So so I can wiggle my way up. Yep, perfect, slid in there nicely. Perfect. All right, and then this tube here is actually supposed to kind of clip into. There we go. That works. Okay, cool. Well, that's all in there then. It's going to be perfect. It's going to sit just perfect there. And then, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to let the glue set. Um, yeah, and then this is going to cover everything. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I'm going to step away a quick second to get my other bits box thing so I can get my hammer. I need to figure out what I'm going to do for the head. But really that's about the coolest one I have in here right now. So hmm. you know what? I'm going to have to I'm gonna just have a big mounting face either. That does. Interesting. 
in. Let's see, yeah. Place the, the head of that all together with that one. <laughs> yeah, I have Death Watch uh, Thunder Hammer. That is, yeah. Yeah, that'll look. That'll look all right. That'll look good. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and just cut this off now. Okay. And I'm gonna try to even this out. This is like a darker gray plastic because this is actually a Thunder Hammer from the Death Watch Kill Team box set um, where it just comes in that darker gray. Which they did a lot of colored plastics for the different Kill Team so I guess if you want to just play Kill Team and not have to paint you had a color going on there. So. And why I've got it off here, I'm going to try to shave off the eye. It would just be a thunder hammer that's not associated with anything else. Alright. Well, again, hopefully, um, I'll try to edit this down as much as possible. Um, this is, by the time I get down, this would be almost a two hour long video for this conversion. Um, so, um, hopefully, I guess I'll, I'll get to something kind of more highlights in the future if need be, or if you guys like this long form version of a, a conversion in action, like, as I'm going along with it. Uh, you yeah, know, I can keep this kind of thing and I don't know, there's background noise while you paint or convert, I suppose. Um, yeah. It would be kind of boring, I suppose, just to watch a two hour long video of some other person building or converting.
this here is not quite even. Let's take a look. Ah oh, man, it's always a tricky thing here. Should be like the mounting surface like level. mounting that once we get finished mounting all of this. Let's check and see how our glue is doing. It's looking pretty well. Let's start to mount this here. Oh, that's the spot right there. That is the spot. Alright, let's get our glue on. It's getting a little too, too slippery on me here. Need the glue. I'm gonna start to sit. I can touch down there, but hopefully it should not be an issue. No, stop slipping. Doing that, I'm gonna to try to start getting this ready because I know already this is gonna be hitting too much. I don't want it to. So I'm gonna shave it down a decent amount. I don't need it to be nearly this thick behind there because I've actually got stuff behind there now, unlike the original. This is the worst part right here. Can't wait for this to settle. There's a piece that's kind of not cooperating the way I want it to right now. It's bothering me.
All right. sit for a little bit. There's a lot of glue dripped down on the leg. I'm not too happy about that. Oh, man. Yes, this will cover some of it, but it's not going to cover it near as much as it used to. That would be the problem. That spacer piece I put in the back apparently like fell into it somehow. So it's basically I got no spine on this thing right now. It's not good. Progress. Kill these big lights. Oh, this part is the hard part. Added. It definitely helped cover some of the smear that happened from this glue that kind of came down. It's kind of nasty. And then this. This on there to help hold the cloak and stuff in place.
Alright, so I am going to do a little bit on both ends. I'm not going to attach it right away. I'm going to let them kind of let the plastic loose start out and do its thing. Then I'll try because otherwise I feel like it's just going to slip and slide all over and won't get it on there. a little bit different because it doesn't have a belt buckle so I ended up opting out of doing the belt buckle for this guy. It's already a bit different in that aspect. This is a little bit different. He still has kind of like a platform on top there that I couldn't really shave down to you know, what I would consider a decent degree. So I want to probably incorporate something else there. So uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead because it's already, like I said, been almost two hours. Or it's actually probably been two hours by now. Um, we'll let this glue and everything kind of dry. And then uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do with the head for this guy. And then we'll be done. Alright, I'm back. So it's still kind of drying, but I uh, tried a few heads out and stuff. But I found one I like. I actually like this um, head from the repulsor kit. Oh, I'm get you. So um, that's what I ended up going with. And then I'm just going to actually add kind of an iron halo looking thing from the Gravis Captain. So um, I'm going to remove that from that and place it on his backpack and it's going to be all done. So um, 
Well, with all that, thank you for sticking around. If you stuck around for such a long time, I definitely appreciate it. And like I said before, or if you missed it earlier in the in the video, um, definitely let me know um, if you like the long form, short form. If you'd like to see more of kind of like a YouTube live thing where I'm just converting and you know taking questions and chatting throughout um, and stuff like that, I, I'm definitely interested in that. I just feel like it would be nice to have a few more subscribers. Um, but uh, you know, at the same time. Uh, you know, we could, could, I would still do it even now. So, <laughs> um, all right. Well, with all that, if you haven't already, I please invite you to subscribe to the channel and to check the Facebook page and throw a like over there. And until next time.